Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Now, you've used the masculine pronoun just now, and that's pretty endemic to Western culture. We think of the Godhead as somehow male. Well, that, that, that's a very interesting point that you raised, Jeffrey, because uh, originally, according to scholarship that has mostly been done in the 20th century around the, the figures of the feminine companions of God, Sophia, and so on, originally, uh, God had, the Judeo-Christian God had feminine companions, and uh, Sophia was the most notable one, uh, and uh, uh, Sophia was identified with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. but... Uh, it's another the, word for wisdom as well. Oh, uh, of course, of course. Uh, but due to the influence of Greek philosophy that was prevalent at the time, particularly the Neoplatonism and uh, philo Judaeus and uh, the Alexandrian school, uh, they believed that God w must be perfect. He must be the sunum bonum and perfect, and uh, therefore he must be male because the feminine is imperfection, stemming from Eve and all of these uh, basically misogynistic myths mm -hmm. that were prevailing in the culture then and, and since, too. Uh, so, what they did was they basically made the Holy Spirit neutral. It was no longer identified with, 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 with Sophia, though in the Eastern Orthodox uh, tradition, this continued. Remember, their greatest church is the Hagia Sophia yeah. in uh, Constantinople. And so, th there was th this shift. The feminine disappeared from the Godhead due to the influence of Greek uh, philosophy and Greek uh, or uh, based prejudices, uh, and uh, it was replaced by something that, that, that was neuter. Now, this disturbed Jung because he uh, uh, said that the Godhead has to reflect wholeness, human wholeness. Now, Jung believed that the Godhead uh, should reflect the self and the whole of the individuation process it should be a path to the Godhead and the self leads you to God. Uh, now you've used the word should here, which is interesting. I would have thought Jung might have said the Godhead does represent the self. Actually, uh, that's true as well, and perhaps mm -hmm. more true mm -hmm. <laughs> than, 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 than what I just said. Uh, well, what he say, when we use the word should, uh, yes, the Godhead does represent the self, and if we're going to find God, we should find God through the self rather than through the ego. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that God, uh, the Godhead, our concept of God, be uh, re reflect the self rather than a particular ego. Now the problem that has occurred is that if you take the Old Testament God or a lot of other representations of God, uh, it comes across as kind of a patriarchal uh, male, uh, uh, the head of a tribe, a sheik, or something like that. Uh -huh. and filled with vengeance at times. Filled with vengeance and ang angry for various things, very demanding. Uh, a, if you move on to St. Paul, this uh, deity has a strong sense of honor. So he comes up with the theory that the honor of God was uh, uh, offended by mankind's uh, eating the apple, mm. uh, the, and this all had to be atoned for. Uh, uh, so you had Christ come down, and, uh, or you had the, God sends his son to yeah. be sacrificed for, for man's sins and mm -hmm. all of that, and it's a question of, the, of God's honor being mm -hmm. offended. Well, uh, Jung, I think, would say, honor is a conception of the ego. It's not a conception of the self.